You are listening to a podcast series from a brother, Taste Vietnam, Taste Asia. My name is Phil. Be here with us to immerse in authentic Asian cultures and learn stories from our interns' experience. And the topic for today is Vietnamese Lunar New Year, Taste Date. Well, we made it through such a difficult year. We all know that. And if you haven't realized that, I'm here to tell you. But don't worry, I will not focus on how tough the 2021 was or complain about how the life treated me not so great when I needed to manage everything at home. No, I won't. I know that we all try to adapt to the new normal. And because of that, we deserve better things to come. In Vietnam, Lunar New Year or Tết is coming. We celebrate it for a couple of days off. But do you know when Vietnamese start to feel Tết atmosphere, like a signal of Tết? Yeah, it's on the 23rd of December, lunar calendar. It's time to worship Ông Công Ông Tao, or Lan Genie and Kitchen Gods. As the legend goes, the Lan Genie and the Kitchen Gods will ride cart to heaven to deliver an annual report on the household's activity to the God of Heaven. That sounds miraculous, right? It's like a reflection of each household at the end of the year. But why is it the cops? Have you heard about the story of cop jumping over the Dragon's Gate? It's really popular in Asia. The Dragon's Gate is located at the top of a waterfall cascading from a legendary mountain. The cops try to swim upstream, and if it successfully makes the jump, it will be transformed into a powerful dragon. So the image of cop turning into a dragon symbolizes sublimation, spirit of overcoming difficulties, and perseverance. So worshipping Ông Công Ông Tao is not just simply buying a cup and leaving it into the river. It's the hope of a prosperous year or just lucky things to come after lots of effort during the old year. Sometimes I wonder that, why do we need to wait for some special days to do special things? We have a bunch of wishes. Can we release the cough at any time of the year? Yes, we can, if we believe in that. But we still have the special days to serve as useful reminders in addition to their original meanings, I think. We can work so hard all the year, and maybe those tons of difficulties get us down. Sometimes we forget to hope. Hope for ourselves and hope for the other. So in Vietnam, Lunar New Year reminds us of the hope. It marks the beginning of a new year with new things to come. It's become a traditional custom to give lucky money in red envelopes called Li Si. The new banknotes in red color symbolize energy, happiness, and prosperity. People give lucky money not only to kids, to older people like their parents and grandparents, even to anyone they respect, and believe that will bring luck to our beloved ones. Only cleans and new notes should be put into a lease. Fun fact is, in the lead up to the New Year's, there's are often long queues at banks as people try to exchange their old and crumble bills. Some people believe that the closer your relationship is, the more money is expected. And we as kids even expect to save up if our parents let us keep that lucky money to do anything we want. Of course, most of the time things are not that easy. <laughs> Some kids are not allowed to keep the money. Their parents may borrow from them or keep their money until they grow up. Shh, that's what they say to me. So, if you have the chance to travel to Vietnam in Tết, prepare some red envelopes with lucky money and be ready to send and receive luck and hope. We also did it at a brother. Another kind of lucky money, but we send postcards to many of our friends in the world. And I have Miss Julie here as one of the people cutting hundreds of stickers and writing postcards to send out before that. Hi Julie, I'm so glad having you here today. I know that you and the broader team has made an effort to prepare and send the postcard on time, right? 
So, what do you feel when manually preparing the postcard? Well, I feel the peace in mind and so warm inside. We all know that this time of the year is very busy, but this activity put a pause to a hectic day for me. I can sit relaxingly, write letters to partners and friends, and send them best wishes. Yeah, me too, because I did the same things. But I have a question: Why did a brother choose postcard with handwriting? I know that email is much more convenient and immediate. Yeah, I know how fast and convenient it is to send mass email, but we believe handwriting is special. I don't know, but I guess receiving something physical in this digital age can spark more connection, human to human. And by sending these postcards to many institutions in the world, we hope for a 2022 with more connection with educators and continue our mission of supporting the local community in a larger scale. And you know, these handwritten postcards can also carry a lot of best wishes to our partners and educators worldwide. We wish everyone great health to do their best in bringing more and more wonderful abroad learning experience to students. I agree, and I know that sending postcard is just one of many activities at a broader to welcome date. Is it? Exactly. Besides sending postcards, we also organize culture exchange for our remote interns this spring. They join the session as a part of their internships to explore the host country and also to shine with their own cultures and identity. I do believe that they had a good time to learn about Tate with the local buddies. Thank you, Miss Julie, for all the energy you bring us. I'm sure the audience hope to see you in the next podcast. Shh, I I promise to bring her here again. So, are you guys curious about that section she just mentioned? Yes, me too. So I invited here an intern who experienced the whole section. Hi, Megan. Thank you for joining us today. What did you feel after this special section? It was so exciting to learn about the most important holiday in Vietnamese culture. I really enjoyed speaking with the locals who were preparing for the Lunar New Year, and it was fun learning about their favorite traditions that they talked about. Um, everyone was so eager and cheerful to share and answer questions, and it made me feel really immersed in Vietnamese culture, uh, especially given that this was an online experience. So I felt really grateful to be included. I'm so glad that you enjoyed the section. Which Vietnamese Lunar New Year activities are you impressed the most? And in your country, do you have any activity like that? So I was really impressed with the house cleaning and decorating that goes on, um, as well as the picking of the new budding flowers. I thought that was beautiful. Uh, we don't have these sorts of activities actually um, embedded in American traditions, at least um, for me and my family. So I definitely appreciated those. Um, I was also impressed by the altars that are decorated with food and either a peach or apricot blossom, depending on if you're in the north or the south, um, as offerings for those who have passed. I thought it was a beautiful way to remember those who have come before us, and that was definitely my favorite Lunar New Year activity that I learned about. Yeah, those are my favorite ones too. But sometimes cleaning the house is not that kind of wonderful, you know. I'm not a hardworking person, at least with cleaning. Uh, oh, let's talk about New Year in your country. Can you tell me one of the differences and one of the same things between how Vietnamese and people in the country celebrate New Year? So one difference between Tet and the way Americans celebrate New Year is that Americans celebrate for only one day, whereas, as I understand. Um, during the Lunar New Year, the celebration goes on for a long period of time. The actual celebrating is three days, but it continues on. Um, but one similarity is that um, we both gather together with close family and friends when we celebrate the New Year, and we enjoy being with those we love most. So, I'm glad we have that in common. I agree. No matter where we are from, I think we both share something in common. That's we want to spend time with our beloved, right? So thank you so much for sharing with me, and I'm happy that you enjoyed the session. I hope to see you in Vietnam one day and experience Vietnamese Lunar New Year in person. All right, so I believe that we are very close to the end of this episode. In the festive atmosphere of it, 
a brother wish you, your family, and friends all the best. If you can't make it a perfect 2022, make it a meaningful one with a hopeful mind. If you are interested in internship and study abroad programs in Vietnam, you know where to reach out to us. Check the link in the description to explore more opportunity in Vietnam and contact us for more information. Don't forget to follow our podcast channel if you are excited to learn more about Vietnam and our participants' experience in Vietnam. Stay tuned! Goodbye for now and see you in the next episode.